Hello everyone, welcome again. So today we'll be studying the energy module of the Year 11 Chemistry syllabus. And in particular, we'll be looking at the factors that influence reaction, or factors of reaction. So we're looking at how, to, how reactions occur and how to sort of make the most of the chemicals that we have um, in a reaction. Okay? So in particular, we'll be looking sort of a lot at the, the kinetic theory of gases, um, and we'll be looking at how that influences um, reactions. And so that's where we're going in this particular series. So the first thing we need to know about gas reactions, in particular gas reactions, is about collisions and particles, right? So we sort of understand the idea that to get a reaction, we need to get collisions happening. Um, so in gas, um, in gas reactions, it's much more important that these collisions happen because there's more space between the molecules. So there's a less likely chance of these collisions happening. And if we were to look at what actually happens in a gas, uh, in a, you know, a, a substance that's made of gas, the interactions between the molecules or the particles is similar to how billiard balls interact, or pool balls. So you see they basically collide with one another, and then the energy that comes into the system leaves as the two billiard balls kind of ricochet off one another. So you can see that you'll see that the gas molecules will act pretty much like billiard balls, just moving in three-dimensional space. So the kinetic theory of gases, what is it? Well, firstly, we need to understand that gases are just made up of particles, just like anything else. But the difference is that they're traveling in constant and random motion. Each of those particles is moving at a random speed in a random direction. And until it collides with something, it will continue going at that random speed in that random direction until it hits something. Okay? So particles that are that a particle here will be going maybe this way, and it will keep going that way at that speed until something gets in the way of it. Okay? So the only way for particles to interact with one another is for them to actually hit each other or collide. So the, the particles will crash into each other like billiard balls and then bounce off. Um, in random directions, and then they'll change their speed as well because they're hitting each other. Okay? And remember, because the random motion of each, each particle is moving randomly, it means that not all of the particles will be moving at the same speed. Okay? So some particles might be moving faster than others, um, some might be moving very, very slowly. Um, so you're not likely to have the same speed or the same direction either. And that gives rise to what we call a velocity distribution. Okay? So what a velocity distribution is, is basically there's a number of particles traveling, there's a maximum number of particles moving at, a, at one speed. And then either side of that speed, you'll see less and less particles. So you won't see particles moving very, very, very much faster than that. And you won't see many particles moving a lot slower than that, that mean speed in the middle. Um, as we go on, you'll start to see more about this velocity distribution. So um, just don't worry too much if you don't fully understand what this means yet. It's more of a probability thing. So collisions and reactions. So let's just take the example of helium gas, the no one of the noble gases. If you were to look at these two particles colliding, they would just simply hit each other elastically and then travel in different directions. Okay, so um, for the physics people, an elastic collision you'll understand, but for chem people, Elastically, elastic collisions are basically when the collision happens and then all of that energy is basically conserved. So the kinetic energy coming in equals the kinetic energy coming out. Okay? However, some particles can react with one another assuming the activation energy can be met. So we've already seen activation energy and we talked a lot about what it is. So if two particles collide at the correct um, energy, so they're moving at the right speed, they can react with one another. Um, assuming that, of course, they're not noble gases. So when two particles meet with sufficient energy, that's what we call activation energy. The bonds are disrupted within the reactants, so the bonds are sort of broken up. And this allows them to form into new substances. So when they collide at the right speed, they disrupt the bonds, and then they form new bonds to form new substances. And that's what reaction is, and we've talked a lot about how that works. Essentially, how fast or how slow a reaction is taking place is what we call the reaction rate. 
So we hear a lot about reaction rates. So basically, it's how fast these things occur, okay? how fast these reactions take place. You can think of it as how quickly chemicals are being consumed in a system or converted into another chemical. And that's what we call the reaction rate. Um, it can also be used to measure how many collisions are occurring in the system. So if you have a lot of collisions, then you have a high reaction rate. If you have a few collisions, you have a very low reaction rate. So that's, that can be used as a measure of the collisions as well. So there it is. So many collisions, high. Few collisions, low reaction rate. Okay. So that wraps up today's lesson on sort of the basics of the kinetic theory of gases. Um, we've looked at what the kinetic theory of gases is. So it's basically particles all traveling in random directions at random speeds. And the only way to interact is to collide. Um, so if you have two particles that don't react, they'll collide with one another and just bounce off. However, if they can react, then they might hit each other, break up some bonds, and then reform into new products. Um, and that's basically how the kinetic theory of gases works. And it's very important for the study of gas phase reactions. So things like combustion heavily rely on kinetic theory of gases. So we'll move to the question segment now. So why does the collision between two helium atoms only result in an elastic collision? So this is something that you should be able to answer based on your knowledge of chemistry. Well, helium is a noble gas, so we've seen that. It's group 8, and thus does not react with any other chemicals. Because remembering that it's stable, so it's got the full outer shell of electrons, so it doesn't need to react with anything to get that full outer shell. And since it has no bonds to break or form, it cannot interact with other helium atoms to form new chemicals. All right, so we talked about the helium collision. So all it does is it just hits it and then bounces off because it can't form any new products because helium doesn't react. So that's why. So question two. What does the reaction rate measure? So this sort of was towards the end of this lesson. We looked at what the reaction rate actually is. So reaction rates measure how fast or slow a reaction is occurring. So if you've got a very high reaction rate, it's going very fast, or you're consuming a lot of chemicals very quickly. Or if it's slow, you're not consuming a lot of chemicals very quickly. So we can also think about it as a measure of how many collisions are happening at a particular time. So many collisions equals a high reaction rate, or few collisions is a low reaction rate. So the more collisions that we have, the higher the reaction rate will be. Okay. So question three, what are some ways you could increase the number of collisions in a system? So if you had a gas and you wanted to make the reaction rate higher or you wanted to see an increase in collisions, what could you do? Well, one, you could increase the pressure or decrease the volume. They're sort of inverse of one another. So with less space to move, particles will likely collide with one another more often. Okay. So let's say we had a box and we had four particles in the box. All right, they're all going in random directions. These two happen to be traveling in the same direction. That's OK. So they may not collide at all. Okay. So, But what we can do is if we suddenly shrink the box by half, suddenly the particles have very much less space to move and they're more likely to collide with one another. So that's a pretty visual way of seeing why this actually works. So if you increase the pressure, there's a similar way. It basically works the same way. So you can see just having less space means we have more collisions. Okay. Alternatively, if you don't want to change the volume or the pressure, we could increase the number of particles. So it basically has the same effect as this one in that by having more particles in the same space, they have less room to move freely, so they'll collide more frequently. Um, so if I drew the original box, it was a little bit bigger, but it's OK. And I put, instead of four, I put eight now. You can see that there's already less space for them to move around, and so they'll collide more frequently with one another. Okay. And lastly, 
you could increase the temperature. So by increasing the temperature, you actually increase the speed at which those particles move. So they'll be travel faster if the temperature is higher. So if the temperature is higher and they're traveling faster, you have more chance of them colliding with one another, simply because if you were to look at it, something traveling faster might hit something more frequently than something traveling very slowly. Okay, so um, you can just increase the temperature as well. So those are the three main ways to increase the reaction rate or increase the number of collisions in a gas system. Okay, that makes sense. We'll move to question four. So if two particles collide with less than the required energy, what is likely to happen? So less than the activation energy, what happens if they collide? Well, basically it happens like the helium, the two helium atoms. They'll basically just hit each other, bounce off one another, and move in different directions. So, so different directions being different directions to when they started. Okay? So two particles coming in this way will hit, then they'll bounce off, and they'll travel in different directions until they hit something else. Additionally, um, for the physics students as well, there will also be a momentum change. So momentum being sort of a measure of different things, uh, basically their speed. So there'll be, a, there'll be a momentum change associated with the collision, and the particles will have their momentum altered by interacting with one another. So if you have a very big particle hitting a very little particle, the momentum of the big particle won't change very much, but the little one might. So you have a change of momentum with those collisions as well. But likely there won't be any chemical changes, um, simply because they don't have enough energy to break bonds. So that's the key. There won't be any chemical changes. So lastly, what kind of conditions need to be met for particles to collide and react? Okay, so we want them to collide and we want them to react. So if those two things are what we need, well, we'll need the particles need to be moving with the correct energy. So basically, the particles need to be going at the right speed. The particles need to have the correct orientation. So for instance, if you had something like this, and you probably want the collision to occur such that it kind of separated the molecule, the separated the bond here. So if this particle was coming in this way, they might just bounce off. Okay? So they need to be going in the right direction as well when the collision actually happens. Otherwise, they might not break the bonds at all. And the particles need to be obviously the correct chemical species to react. So, you know, having two oxygen atoms hit each other, or two oxygen molecules hitting each other, may not do anything. But having an oxygen molecule hitting, say, a carbon molecule, a carbon atom, might do something, right? So they have to have the, chemi the right chemical species. And so from these three conditions, you can see that even for a really simple reaction, um, the chance of you actually getting a reaction to happen, or the correct collisions, is really small. Right? The chance of meeting all three, these three criteria is pretty small, because the atoms are so small, the space could be very big, and these are very difficult to meet all at the same time. However, because you have so many particles in that space, you have you know, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles, reactions still occur, because there's just so many particles that even though the probability of all three of these things happening um, is low, because the, 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 the number of particles is so big, you still get a reaction occurring. Okay? So that concludes today's lesson on, the, on collisions and particles. So we looked at the kinetic theory of gases, and we looked at um, what, what that means and what the implications are of the kinetic theory of gases. So in the future lessons, we'll talk about how we can use the kinetic theory of gases to predict um, what will happen when we change reaction settings or reaction um, conditions. And so I hope to see you at our next lesson.